worship the Lord. Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. By the power of your blood, the blood of the eternal covenant, Lord. You will work maturity into every part of our lives, giving us all that you need to fulfill our destiny, Lord. Wow, amazing. So as I touch the keyboard, right before the stream starts, this is what comes out of my heart. Yeah, yeah. by the blood, Lord, of your eternal covenant you're working maturity into every part of our life giving us all we need to fulfill our destiny the blood, Lord, of your everlasting covenant, yeah, you're working maturity into every part of our lives, you're giving us all we need to fulfill our destiny in you, in you, our destiny, hear it again, come on, learn it as we go, yeah. By the blood, Lord, of your eternal covenant, yeah, you're working maturity into every part of our lives. You give us all that we need, yeah, to fulfill our destiny. the power of the blood of your covenant, Lord Jesus, you're working maturity into every part of our lives, you're giving us all we need to fulfill our godly destiny. By your divine power, your power is able to do everything we need. Your divine power is able to do for us everything we stand in need of. Your divine power is able to do for us everything we stand in need of. Oh, Lord. Your divine power is able to do everything for us. Your divine power is able to do everything for us that we stand in need of. That we stand in need. You get it? Somebody, let me see the hearts and thumbs flying, people. Yeah, yeah, your divine power is able to do everything for us. We stand in need of your divine power is able to do everything for us that we stand in need of. Beautiful. Your blood, Lord, the blood of the eternal covenant. You're working maturity into every part of our life, giving us all that we need to fulfill our destiny. And that wonderful, hear it, get it deep in your spirit, yeah. By the power of the blood of your eternal covenant, Lord, yeah, you're working maturity in 
into every part of our life, giving us all we need yeah, to fulfill godly destiny. Ah, yeah, by the power of your blood, Lord, by the power of your blood, the eternal covenant your working maturity into every part of our life, giving us all we need, Lord, yeah, to fulfill godly destiny. I love it. I love it. Okay, Hebrews 13, verse 21. 20 right in front of it. Now may the God who brought us peace by raising from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. That he would be the great shepherd of his flock. Oh, man. He's my great shepherd. Oh. And then by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant. I mean, what a phrase. <laughs> Come on. Verse 21, Hebrews 13. By the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, uh, there is such a thing. May he work perfection, which that word in the Greek is deep maturity, high-level maturity, into every part of your life, giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. I'm going to sing it again. Come on, everybody, get it and join up today. By the power, Lord, of the eternal covenant, yeah, you're working perfection into every part of our lives, giving us all we need to fulfill our destiny. Oh, yeah. By the blood, yeah. By the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, yeah, you're working maturity into every part of our life, giving us all we need uh, to fulfill our destiny. Sing it again. Let it get in your spirit. It's registering in your mind. By the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, and Lord, you're working maturity into every part of our life. you giving us all that we need to fulfill our destiny. Your divine power is able to do everything we stand in need of. We stand in need of your divine power is able to do everything we need. We stand in need of. Your divine power is able to do for us everything we stand in need of. Isn't that awesome? Your divine power is able to do, is able to do, is able to do everything we stand in need of able to, your divine power able to do able to do everything we stand in able to do able to do yeah. everything we stand in need of able to do able to do able to do everything we stand in need of able to your divine power is able to do everything we stand in need of the blood of the eternal covenant.
blood of the eternal covenant. You're working perfection into every part of our life, giving us all that we need. You're giving us day by day, hour by hour, everything that we need to fulfill our destiny. Fulfill our destiny. Isn't it beautiful? The power of the word. This is knowable. It's doable. It's not rocket science or brain surgery. Thank you, Lord, for the book of Hebrews. Over in chapter 13, last chapter of the awesome book. And I brought the song. Even so, come, Lord. Let the spirit and the bride say, Come, it's in the book of Revelation. Like the bride waiting for her groom, we'll be the church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, yeah, like the bride. Waiting for her groom will be the church, God, ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so calm, Lord Jesus, come. Yeah, so we ask you come Lord Jesus Jesus come even so even so come Lord Jesus come all of creation and all of creation all of the earth make straight the highway the path for the Lord and not now. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. <laughs> Maranatha. Call back the sinners. Wake up the saints. Let every nation shout of your name. Now. Jesus is coming again all of creation the verse yeah, yeah and all of creation all of the earth break straight the highway the path for the Lord and now Jesus is coming soon Woo! call back the sinner and call back the sinners and wake up the saints. Let every nation shout of your fame. Yeah, Jesus is coming. You guys ready? Like the bride, yeah, yeah. like the bride waiting for a groom. We'll be the church ready for you. the bride waiting for her groom will be the church my God ready for you every heart longing for our king we sing even so calm Lord Jesus calm and he so come, Lord G. Come on, cry out before the Lord, before the Lord. Yeah, even so come, 
And Lord Jesus, come. Yeah, even so, come, Lord. Lord Jesus. There's a second verse. It's really for me, if it ain't for anybody else. And there will be justice, and all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. There'll be justice. All will be new. And there will be justice. And all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. It's written on his thigh. Faithful and true, like the bright air, like the bright air waiting for groom. We'll be the church ready for you, every heart longing for our King. We say. the bride waiting for her groom will be the church ready for you every heart longing for our king we sing even so come Lord Jesus very powerful song and they added a bridge where we can wait on the Lord check it out so we wait yes we wait we wait for you yes Lord we wait for your coming <laughs> come on sing it out with hope expectation in your heart so we wait we wait for you hey, yeah, Lord we wait for your coming soon check it out here we go and the spirit and the bride say come the Spirit and the Bride say come. Will the Spirit and the Bride say come, Lord G. Come on, learn it with me. Sing it out here. In the Spirit and the Bride say come. Yes, the Spirit and the Bride say come. Will the Spirit and the Bride say come. Lord Jesus, will the Spirit and the Bride say, come? Will yeah, the Spirit and the Bride say, come? Yeah, the Spirit and the Bride. Come on, everybody lift it up before Him. The Spirit and the Bride. Will oh, the Spirit and the Bride and the Spirit and the Bride say, come? The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, oh, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> like the Bride, like the Bride, waiting for her groom. We'll be the church ready for you, every heart longing for our King. Wow, we're longing for the King. We sing, yeah, yeah, like the bride waiting for her groom. Wow, we'll be the church a special day, a special time. Thank God marriage is still around. 
and the bride and the bridegroom terminology, the language is still here. I, I mean, I really do, in, in a marvelous way, look back when Carla and I got married. I was leading worship June of 74 with my friend Ron Tucker. Our youth group went, went crazy, grew a lot, deep worship. And I saw Carla from across the room. I said, hey, I was going to be celibate, but I'm not celibate anymore. People said, wow, what was that? I said, I saw a good thing, and I ran it down. And so we're in the midst of that. And then we, I asked her to marry me. After three weeks, we went to what? three different Bible studies. They, are, they were Catholic charismatic meetings in St. Jude's All Souls and Normandy, St. Anne's. St. Anne's. And she said, yes. I said, oh, my God. And so I think uh, these are accurate numbers, right, Carla? There were seven to 800 people at our wedding at New Covenant, or six to 700. And so I want you to tell them the story of, of um, there was no food left in all that yard. <laughs> 1975 dinosaurs were roaming the earth. <laughs> you tell them about it. My dad gave me five hundred dollars to get married. <laughs> Oscar. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we had uh, volunteers making cakes and oh, yeah. bringing stuff, and we had no idea. We invited the whole church, so we had no no idea how many would come. Wait a minute. You did your gown in my shirt, right? Yeah, I made his shirt and my gown. It was pretty hippie-ish, but... <laughs> it was orange and yellow and stuff, flowers. <laughs> it was embroidered. So... Oh, we um, didn't know how many people were coming. We had no idea how many people were coming. And so <laughs> we were in a receiving line for two hours, something yeah, like that, while hours. the reception. It, it, the way the New Covenant was set up was they, they took up the chairs and then they rolled out the tables. <laughs> You know, after the wedding, they took up the yeah, chairs, rolled out the, the tables. It so it was all in the same room. And um, by the time we got out of the receiving line, there wasn't even a peanut left on the table. <laughs> and we were so starving. hungry. Starving. We were starving. It was a beautiful thing. But listen, the other part of the story is that Mr. Smart Guy over here, yours truly, I said, man, bro, check it out. I'm going to sing to my wife coming down the aisle. I can do it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a song. It's going to be so good. Scoring points. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I've been singing in a band since I'm 13. And I was 22 when we got married. Or almost 22. I was 20, we were 21 and 23, right? Yeah. Because your birthday is the 30th. We got married on the 27th. You were 22. I was 23. Almost 24. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got you. That's right. Because <laughs> we're like two years apart. And I'll never forget it when the door swung open in the back and there was Carla and her dad. I went, what was I thinking singing to my wife <laughs> coming down the aisle? But I did it. It was pretty cool. But I just think of the language, which I don't hear many pastors or men of God even talk about the bride and the bridegroom. We got to catch up a little bit on that, eh? So it was quite a day and... 46 years ago, seems like just a few years ago, doesn't it, Carla? <laughs> Except we're married 46 years. Well, you guys, here we go. Hebrews 13. How many have loved this book? I mean, I'm going to continue. i got to figure out how to make my notes available to people. Um, just because uh, I do have a few people ask me for these translations and stuff. But everybody get over to hebrews 13 say thank god for the word carla's gonna read there's 25 verses the last few are salutation and paul's blessing but we're going to do it all in one pass today 25 verses read that scripture hebrews 13 now may the god who brought us peace okay. by raising from the dead our so, lord jesus christ say that he would be the great shepherd of his flock and by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant may he work perfection into every part of you giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny and from the matthew henry commentary think of this you guys the title here given to god is the god of peace the god of shalom who has 
found a way for peace and reconciliation between the Lord himself and sinners. Somebody say, thank God. Wow. Who loves peace on earth and the great work ascribed to him. He brought, bought, brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus. He rose again for our justification and that by divine power, with which he was raised, it's able to do everything for us that we stand in need of. His divine power is able to do everything for us that we stand in need of. Then the titles given to Jesus Christ, Sovereign, Savior, the Great Shepherd of the Sheep, it's the promise of Isaiah 40, verse 1. Then Jesus declared by himself to be our shepherd. He said it out loud in the Gospels. This denotes his interest in us as his people. We are his flock, the flock of his pasture. We're in his loving care and concern every day and all day long. And through the blood of the everlasting covenant, the blood of Christ satisfies divine justice. Having paid our debt according to an eternal covenant, an agreement between the Father and the Son, this blood is the sanction and seal of an everlasting covenant between God and His people here at this blood is the sanction and seal of an everlasting covenant between God and his people. Hebrews 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, wow. for by doing so some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Let love continue among you. Whoa. Don't forget to extend your hospitality to all, even to strangers, for as you know, some have unknowingly shown kindness to heavenly messengers in this way. Remember those in prison for their beliefs, as if you were their cellmate. Wow. And care for any who suffer harsh treatment, as you are all one body. Wow. No matter what, make room in your heart to love every believer and show hospitality to strangers, for they may be angels from God showing up as your guests. Wow. The Aramaic can be translated, for this is how you are worthy to receive angels while awake. Identify with those who are in prison as though you were there suffering with them and those who are mistreated as if you could feel their pain. So let brotherly love, let's sing it. Let brotherly love, let brotherly love continue on. Brotherly love continue on. Entertaining strangers entertaining strangers they could have been angels and that's what he said unwittingly entertaining angels with your kindness let a brotherly love continue yeah. let brotherly love continue and entertain these strangers they could have been angels they could have been angels you entertain without knowing and taking care of the prisoners let brotherly love continue yeah. let brotherly love continue in entertaining strangers they could have been angels They could have been angels and you were unaware. 
Remember the prisoners, remember the prisoners, as if chained to the wall with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the prisoners. I, that's why I love people that do prison ministry. Nursing home ministry improves. We've not grown callous and not concerned about those less fortunate than us. Wow. Verses 4 and 5, we'll do them separately. Marriage is honorable among us all, and the bed undefiled, because God will judge the fornicators, the adulterers. This is what the scripture says, wow, dude. It says God will judge the fornicators and adulterers. That's truly old school English right there. Hold marriage in high esteem and remain faithful to one another in your marriage. Because God will surely judge people who are immoral and he'll judge those who commit adultery. I love this from the New Living Translation. Hold marriage in high esteem and then remain faithful to one another in your marriage. Honor the sanctity of marriage. I don't think it's over in America yet, you guys. Should have been civil unions, not marriages between a man and a woman. That's what God said. He said, keep your vows of purity to one another. For God will judge sexual immorality in any form. Whoa. Whether single or married, hold the sanctity of marriage. Keep your vows of purity to one another. And then check this right here. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I'll never leave you. Stay right there. He said, I'll never leave you, verse 5, or forsake you. And we thank you very much for that, Lord. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Be content with what you have from him. your lives free from the love of money be content with what you have in him he said I will never leave you or forsake you I will always be by your side don't you love it I will never leave you nor forsake you I will always be by your come on sing it out he said well, I'll never leave you nor forsake you I will always be by your side oh, I will never leave I love it nor forsake you I will always be by your side keep your lives free from the lust of money what the Philip says keep your lives free from the lust for money it, it's it's way up there when it calls it a lust it said be satisfied with what you have for God has said I'll never fail you thank you and the second one I will never abandon you it's a bad feeling. You think somebody's going to be there. He said, I'm not the God of abandonment. The passion finishes verse 5. Don't be obsessed with money. Whoa, there it is. Woo! Don't be obsessed with the lust for money. But live content with what you have. For you always have God's presence. Isn't that beautiful passion translation? You always have God's presence. For hasn't he promised you, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never.
never loosen my grip on your life yeah. and I will never leave you I will never forsake you I'm not loosen my grip on your life yeah, yeah. I will never leave you oh, I will not forsake you I will not loosen my grip on your life yeah, yeah. I will never leave you I'll never forsake you I will not loosen my grip on your life on your Isn't that great? Verse 4 and 5. Thank you, Lord. You will not abandon us. You'll not forsake us. Verse 6 and 7. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember those who led you who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. So we take comfort and are encouraged. We confidently say, the Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Remember your leaders, for it was they who brought you the word of God, and consider the result of their conduct, the outcome of their godly lives, and imitate their faith, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider of eternal salvation through Christ. Imitate their reliance on God with absolute trust and confidence wow. in His power, wisdom, and goodness. And the Passion says, so we can say with great confidence, I know the Lord is for me, and I will never be afraid of what people may do to me. <laughs> Don't forget the example of your spiritual leaders who have spoken God's messages to you. Take a close look at how their lives ended Consider the outcome, spiritual fruit of the way they lived. Then follow their walk of faith. Then follow their walk of faith. I know the Lord is for me. I'll never be afraid of what people do they do to me. I know the Lord is for me. I will never be afraid of what people may do for me. I know the Lord is my helper in my time of need. I know you're my helper in my time of need. Lord, I know you're helper in my time of need. I know the Lord is my helper. Spiritual fruit, those that were our leaders and led us, Lord. And we will then follow their walk of faith, bearing spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit. We will, Father, we will walk in their shoes of faith those that went before those the trailblazers we will follow their walk of faith bearing spiritual fruit spiritual fruit we will follow their walk of faith bearing do it again spiritual fruit yeah, yeah. We will follow their walk of faith, bearing spiritual fruit, spiritual fruit. We will follow their walk of faith. All right, let's go on, verses 8 and 9. Hallelujah. Jesus 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is so close. Almost all the translations say the same thing, you guys. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is eternally changeless. Amplified Bible said always the same yesterday, <laughs> today, and forever. The complete Jewish Bible and tree of life says Yeshua. Yeshua the Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, from Young's literal translation, says, He's the same yesterday, today, and unto the ages. Think of that. There's no other religious leader even claim that. Jesus Christ, yesterday and today, the same and unto the ages. Isn't that just give you equilibrium and balance? Jesus, the anointed one, is always the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The Aramaic is translated, Jesus, the Messiah, is the fulfillment of yesterday, today, and forever. What did it say? It says, Jesus, the Messiah, the note in the passion, he is the fulfillment of yesterday, today, and forever. I love it. So don't be carried about with various and strange doctrines. For it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who've been occupied with them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle, they have no right to eat what they presented on the altar. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin. Their bodies are actually burned outside the camp. Wow, this is super heavy. And it's more beautiful to feast on grace and be inwardly strengthened than to be obsessed with dietary rules, which in themselves have no lasting benefits. Oh, God. Got to read it again. Yes, I can. You see, it's more beautiful to feast on grace and be inwardly strengthened than be obsessed with dietary rules which in themselves have no lasting benefits. We feast on a sacrifice at our spiritual altar by those who serve as priests in the old system of worship, but they have no right to eat it. And here we go, the voice. Do not be carried away by diverse and strange ways of believing or worshiping. Hear it again. Do not be carried away by diverse and strange ways of believing and or worshiping. For it's good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by regulations about what you can eat which do no good even for those who observe them. It's good for the heart to be strong. Our hearts are strengthened by our hearts. Yes, it's good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace. Yes, it's good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace. And not by regulations about what you should drink, you should eat, what you should drink or eat. Not regulations of what you should drink or eat, what you drink or eat. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace. Yes, it's good for my heart to be strengthened by your grace. Not by regulations of what I should eat, 
Oh, it's good for my heart to be strengthened by grace and not by regulations of what we should eat. Verse 10. We approach an altar from which those who stand before the altar in the tent, they have no right to eat what's been sacrificed. See, in the past, the bodies of those animals whose blood was carried into the sanctuary by the high priest to take away sin were all burned outside of the camp. And here's the point, 12 through 14. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Woo! So also Jesus suffered and died outside the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. So let us go out to him outside the camp and bear the disgrace he bore. For this world is not our permanent home. Wow. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. And Jesus, our sin sacrifice, also suffered death outside the city walls to make us holy by his own blood. So we must arise and join him outside the religious walls and bear his disgrace. For we have no city here on earth to be our permanent home but we seek the city that is destined to come. Let's think about Jesus. Well, Jesus, our sin sacrifice. Jesus, our sin sacrifice. You suffered death. Lord, you suffered death outside the city walls to make us a holy by your blood. Yeah. Jesus is our sin sacrifice. Jesus, you were our sin sacrifice. You suffered death outside the city walls. You suffered death outside the city walls to make us holy by your blood. Jesus, our sin sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, our sin sacrifice. You suffered death out city, outside the city walls. You made us holy by your blood. Holy by your blood, holy by your blood, you were our sin sacrifice. You made us holy by your blood, my God. Holy by your blood, holy by your blood, you were our sin sacrifice. And check this out. For this world is not my permanent home. For this world is not my permanent home. We're looking forward to a home yet to come. Home with the Lord, oh, we're looking forward to a home yet to come. We're looking forward to a home yet to come. To a home you were our sin sacrifice hear it you were our sin sacrifice you suffered death outside the city walls to make us holy yeah. our sin sacrifice lord our sin sacrifice you suffered death outside the walls to make us holy by your blood seeking a home not of this earth Lord 
We seek the city whose architect, builder, and maker is God. You see, we have no city here on this earth to be our permanent home, but we're seeking the city that is destined to come. We have no city here on earth to be our permanent home. We're seeking that city that is destined to come in you, O Lord. We have no city here on this earth to be our permanent home, but we seek the city you built. We desired it. It is coming now. Oh, we have no city here on this earth, no city on this earth to be our permanent home. We seek the city that is destined to come. The city whose architect, builder, and maker, God, beautiful God. Therefore, verse 15, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Just stop right there. This is so powerful. Should have been taught at every major worship conference. Should be taught three times a year. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name therefore by him let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise to God the sacrifice of praise to you O living God therefore by him let us continually offer up the sacrifice of praise to God I'm offering up the sacrifice of praise to God by him continually I offer up my sacrifice of praise how many know this scripture Know it by heart. It's been in your life for many years. Let me see the hearts and thumbs flying in. We continually offer up the sacrifice of praise to the living God. By Him, therefore, we continually offer up this sacrifice of praise. the fruit of our lips. We're giving thanks to your name. Thanks to your name by giving thanks to your name. Oh, offering up our sacrifice. Giving thanks unto your name. With the fruit of our lips we offer the sacrifice of praise to our God. We offer up our sacrifice of praise to our God. This is the fruit of my lips. Giving thanks to your name, the fruit of my lips. Giving my sacrifice of praise, the fruit of my lips. Giving thanks to your name. I offer my sacrifice of praise. Stay with me. Come on, guys. Join up. Yeah. This is the fruit. This is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to your name. A sacrifice of praise. This is the fruit of our lips, Lord. Giving thanks to your name. The sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice, I love this scripture, Hebrews 13, toward the end of the whole book, and the voice says, through Jesus then, what? 
Let us keep offering to God our own sacrifice, okay? The praise of lips that confess his name without ceasing. Oh, I know we didn't get that. We offer our own sacrifice. That is the praise of our lips that confess his name without ceasing. Beautiful. It's the praise of our lips that confess his name without ceasing. We confess his name. The fruit of our lips giving thanks. So we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices, but through Jesus, we will offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. You kidding me? That's beautiful. You see, we no longer offer a steady stream of blood sacrifices, but through Jesus. Everybody say it, but through Jesus. But through Jesus. But through Jesus. But through Jesus. We offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. These are the lambs, the fruit of our lips that we offer up from our lips that celebrate his name. It's beautiful. These, I can't believe the passion said that. These are the lambs, the fruit of our lips we offer up. Verse 16. But do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. For they watch out for your souls. All those who must give an account, let them do so with joy and not with grief. For that would be unprofitable for you. We will show mercy to the poor and not miss an opportunity. Here it is to do acts of kindness. It's not a bumper sticker on the back of a car. It's a scripture. Do acts of kindness for others. Thanks for sharing verse 16, chapter 13, bro. Do acts of kindness. Keep doing your acts of kindness for others. Do acts of kindness, do acts of kindness for others, yeah, sing it out. We are doing acts of kindness, doing acts of kindness for others, because you said so, Lord. Well, we're doing acts of kindness, doing acts of kindness for others, do it again, yeah. kindness, doing acts of kindness for others. This delights your heart. We're doing acts of land on it, land on it, and get it in your heart. We're doing acts of kindness. For these, it continues on, are the true sacrifices that delight God's heart. What are they, Ken? For these are the true sacrifices that delight God's heart. Obey your spiritual leaders and recognize their authority. For they keep watch over your soul without resting, since they'll have to give an account to God for their work. It will benefit you when you make their work a pleasure and not a heavy burden. Hear it. It will benefit all of us When you make your leaders make their work a pleasure and not a heavy burden, somebody say amen. Carla, finish. Verse 18 through 25. Pray for us. Pray for us. For we are confident that we have a good conscience 
in all things desiring to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. And keep praying for us, that we will continue to live with a clear conscience, for we desire to live honorably in all that we do. And I especially ask you to pray that God would send me back to you very soon. Now may the God who brought us peace by raising from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, so that he would be the great shepherd of his flock, and by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant, may he work perfection into every part of you, giving you all that you need to fulfill your destiny. Beautiful. And may he express through you all that is excellent and pleasing to him through your life union with Jesus, the Anointed One, who is to receive all glory forever. Amen. May he equip you, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I urge you to let your spirits flow through this message of love that I've written to you in these few words. I want you to know that our brother Timothy is free again, and as soon as he arrives here, we'll come together to see you. We extend our greetings to all your leaders and all the holy believers. The Italian believers also send their greetings. Now, may God's wonderful grace be poured out upon you all. Amen. Verse 21. Let's linger for a minute. He's working maturity into every part of our lives, giving us all that we need to fulfill our destiny. You're working maturity into every part of our lives, Lord. giving us all that we need to fulfill destiny. Working perfection into every part of my life. You give us, Lord, all that we need to fill, fulfill our destiny. Lord, You're working maturity into every part of my life. And you give us all that we need to fulfill our godly destiny. You're working maturity into every part of my life. Then you hand to me everything I need. Everything I need to fulfill my destiny in you. Yeah. You're working perfection and maturity into every part of my life. Then you hand to me everything I need to fulfill my godly destiny. Somebody sing it out. Well, thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord, for giving us everything we need to fulfill our destiny. Sing it out. Oh, well, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we thank you, Lord. You give us everything we need to fulfill our destiny. Get it, get it now. Thank you, Lord. Worship. Yeah, we thank you, Lord. Yeah, that you give us everything we need to fulfill our godly destiny. We sing.
Thank you, Lord, that you give us everything we need to fulfill godly destiny. Destiny, yeah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Woo. Yes, we thank you, Lord. You give us everything. Wow. And we pray together right now, guys. Thank you for this book of Hebrews, Father. In Jesus' name, marked our summer of 2021. 13 premium chapters of divine revelation, one of the greatest books in the Bible. We ask you, God, to remind us and build this revelation of this book deeply in our hearts that when the storms come of life, Lord, we'll say no. We're trusting him who knew no sin that became sin on our behalf. We're standing in the righteousness of God because of Jesus. And even this last chapter, the blood of an everlasting covenant tells us where we are, Lord that we can offer that sacrifice of praise continually. Continually. We will be in your praise and in your worship. So bless us all. Bless us all, Lord. We thank you for the revelation and Holy Spirit continue to lead us and guide us. In the greater realms of the truth, Jesus said, it's better that I go away. I'm going to prepare a place for you, but I'm sending the paracletos, the Holy Spirit, back in my place. It's to your advantage. It's to your advantage. Thank you, Lord. Wow. What a book. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to do Saturday night. Uh, I'm going to be up in Florissant, Missouri, for people that are watching that are in the area. It's at uh, Gateway Legacy Academy. It's 700 Howder Shell Road. I'm really glad I remembered that. It's off of 270. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. We're doing a two-hour night of worship, prayer, intercession and stuff so if you're in your area you want to come and uh it's greater greater well it used to be greater glory it's gateway christian fellowship if i've got the name right with my good friends greg and melissa morrison and uh very powerful i still have to check if we can stream that live i want to do that it seems like a, a, you know things jump when we do that uh, but I got to figure out if they have the streaming facilities there. They do in Illinois at their church in Glen Carbon. But uh, anyway, and then I got a couple of things in my heart. I haven't landed on it yet. Uh, it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Either Zephaniah, Zechariah, or something out of the blue may come. Let's keep praying about our destination the rest of the summer. Deep worship always before the throne, but going deeper in the word of God. So I'll see you Saturday night seeking and soaking before the throne in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Peace. Woo!